reality, when there is an issue, you have to get hold of the issue by its very essence and by its very, uh, very core and then it gets resolved. If you, Dvaita, the issue of Dvaita, duality is this, Satchit duality is the issue of duality. When you understand the duality, what, what is the core of this duality? Why it appears so strong? Where does it lie? It's a secret. Once you get hold of that duality is a secret firmly, then a resolution of duality doesn't take much effort. Therefore, it, we are addicted or we are, uh, we are deluded to believe that the existence is outside and the knowledge is inside. This division is wrong. There is nothing outside of you. Everything exists in you and it exists by you or because of you. And uh, you are the center of the cosmos. And you are Brahman, in that sense you are Brahman, not in the sense of a body-mind identified equality. So this is how the Satchit duality has to be resolved. And uh, that is the purpose of this prayer also. So we have seen that. Then, uh, so now you can say the Satchit is one, one reality. Coming to Satchit, Sat alone is real. Chit is not real at all. Chit is an epiphenomenon of the Sat. Sat is real, Chit is unreal. These are called Nastikas or Charvakas. Chit is real, Sat is unreal. They are called Bodhas, Kshanika Vijnana Vagans. Both Sat and Chit are real and separate. They are the Dvaita Vadis. Both Sat and Chit are one and the same. They are Vedantins. Both Sat and Chit are unreal. They are Shunyavadis. This is the entire structure of philosophers. Therefore, we are Vedantins. We understand, not believe, we understand that Sat and Chit constitute one reality which is called Atman, which is called Brahman. So, that, that is the basis of those prayers. Now, what is the, you see, Sat is, is the core. And uh, there, there is a movement in the Sat that appears as the Chit. You can consider Chit, if not movement, you not movement, you say like this. Chit is uh, the nature of Sat. Sat is the reality. And uh, Chit is its nature. Chit is knowingness, is its nature. And uh, uh, then uh, Satchit we have in place. Now Ananda is the fragrance of Satchit. You can take it like that. Ananda is uh, not uh, a state of mind called pleasure. It is not that. It is uh, not a state at all. It is not a state. It is the Swarupa. It is, the, it is like uh, the fragrance of a flower. Fragrance of a flower is not a state of the flower, it is the flower itself. The flowerness itself is experienced as fragrance. So, understand it like that. So, the fragrance of Satchita is Ananda. Here Ananda is not a, a euphoric sensation of pleasure, it is not. In, generally, in a, in a pleasure situation, there is a lot of movement of the mind. The same movement of the mind is reflected in the person's uh, con conduct. He is dancing, he is jumping, he is shouting, he is talking, and uh, he is doing things, many, many things he is doing. All the movement you see outwardly has its origin in the mind, because uh, mind is the origin of all movement, you know. Mind itself is movement at the subtle level. And the subtle movement of the mind reflects as the gross movement of speech and body actions and all that. So, that is what we call pressure. Uh, and uh, so, a, a euphoric uh, sensation it is. It, the mind is put on a very uh, excited state of high energy. That is what is called pressure. We are not talking of that. When we talk of Ananda, we are not talking of that. Because, the body-mind cannot be, cannot remain in an excited state of high energy for long. 
it gets burnt out. It is like a, a filament of a bulb can, absor- can sustain or contain a certain amount of electricity and glow. And if you push the filament to glow more by sending more electricity, it will fuse. Similarly, the body mind can take certain amount of uh, paroxysm in the name of pressure, turbulence, certain amount of turbulence it can handle. But if you push it, more pressure, more pressure, and then it becomes more turbulence, more turbulence, then the body mind, it gets fused out. And so this is how people become sick. So the repeated uh, experience of very euphoric pleasure, sensation of pleasure makes people sick physically as well as mentally. Therefore, the pleasure is not a desirable thing at all. What really we need is the quietude and the peace of the mind when all this turbulence is subsided, it is set aside and then the inner reality of the Satchit reveals itself and it comes to the surface as it was. So it comes to the surface because the movement of the mind acts like a screen that covers up the inner, the ground of Satchit. Now the, when the turbulence of the mind is gone, it reduced and the mind becomes quiet, then the Satchit, the fragrance of Satchit, which is Ananda, which is in the form of Mahashanti, and which is a, uh, more negative than positive, in the sense that when you are going through a pleasurable experience, you are very self-conscious about it. This is my my joy, my victory, like that. You are very self-conscious about it. Whereas, when uh, you abide in that uh, Satchit, there is no small self, and hence that the self-consciousness itself is absent. You are not conscious of it as a state at all. Because it is free from all attributes and all descriptions and all limitations, therefore you cannot be conscious of it. To be conscious of it, you must, uh, it must be having a certain attribute. When it is free from all attributes and you yourself do not stand apart from it as an individual, there is nothing like being conscious of Ananda. You just merge in the Ananda and be the Ananda. That, that, is a, that is how it is understood. Therefore, even when we use the word experience of Ananda or bliss, etc., you have to understand it cautiously. And, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is not an experience of the ordinary kind where all divisions are in place whereas, and also which is time bound. Whereas this uh, is not time bound at all because it is the Swarupa. Whatever comes from outside and goes, that becomes time bound. Whereas whatever is your own, it is not time bound, it is timeless. And so that is the Ananda, that is, uh, in the, that you are not self conscious about it when you abide in it. And uh, um, in the, that, uh, that uh, Swarupa can only be described as the absence of all self consciousness, the absence of all sense of limitation, and also the absence of all sense of want. That is how you can describe it. You cannot describe it in a positive way. That's why we have a word for it, Ananda. We just have a word in Sanskrit, Ananda. In English you can coin some word like that. Many people coin the word bliss in that sense. But this is understood like this. That Ananda is the fragrance of the Satchit. And that's why we say Satchit Ananda. And uh, in a different way, the sat- Satyam, which is the Sat, is presented as a Satyam Shivam Sundaram. That is another aspect of the same Satya. That is another way of putting it. What is Satyam? He is auspicious. And what is Satyam and what is auspicious is the beauty, beautiful. That is the beauty. So, when you look at the world, there is a beauty that is mind-made. The mind projects a sense of beauty. That is one kind of beauty, which is very uh, transient and very unreal. Whereas, uh, there is uh, an inner beauty which is not a product of the thought. That inner beauty is no different from the Satya itself. 
on the being the reality the itself is a beauty its beauty so when we talk of the beauty sometimes it is also called perfection and when we look at the satya from that standpoint the same satya is described as satyam shivam sundaram whatever we describe as satchidananda is also described as satyam shivam sundaram that is another way of looking at it where sundara is not the a beauty as it is understood by human mind but the beauty which is perfection of the entire creation itself so uh, that is another way of looking at it so that ananda coming back to sachidananda that ananda is the third aspect so to say third aspect of satyam sat sat chit ananda of the vastu the reality and we refer to it also in our prayer that can be a kind of Uh, I am trying to say up a few things, a certificate, etc. And now we can look at the press. Spuranti Sikara Yasmat Spuranti Sikara Yasmat Ananda Syambare Vanau Ananda Syambare Vanau Sarvesham Jeevanam Tasmai Sarvesham Jeevanam Tasmai Brahmanam Dhatmane Namaha अवने अंबरव अंब सॉरी अंबरे अवनव अंबरे मींस इन द स्पेस दैट इज द देवलोका देयर इज अ देवलोका एको एंड अवनव भूलोका इज हियर इन देवलोका ऑल द देवताज आई इंक्लूडिंग द देवनायक लाइक इंद्र वरुण अग्नि एट्स एट्रा दे आर ऑल हैप्पी दैट इज हाउ देवताज आर दैट्स व्हाई a vaidika performs various rituals to reach the state of devatvam where he can be happy uninterrupted happiness so they are all happy there and then in the bhuloka also people are happy eh, not only people are happy all the animals birds and all creatures they are also happy so in their own way everybody is happy see when you look around everyone is happy and uh, this happiness or this joy everyone is joyous this joy is interrupted quite often for various reasons of samsara or ignorance they get interrupted uh, but there are moments of joy in the life of every living being anandasya sikaraha anandasya sikaraha sthuranti You see, the word is "furanti." You have to understand very correctly. You see, lamp is there, a lamp, a glowing lamp. When you say the lamp is illuminating all these objects, when you say like that, that statement is a formula for duality. How? the lamp is the karta doer and it is doing a job of illuminating all these objects that kind of an impression you get and the so karta is there karma is there and the kriya is also there illuminating is a transitive verb prakashayati is a transitive verb when there is a transitive verb the duality comes into picture because karta and karma now without karta and karma there cannot be a transitive verb so in fact i tell you when you have a transitive verb it all begins with the verb this is mimamsaka's version it all begins with the verb it doesn't begin with karta it begins with karma with kriya because there is kriya karta cha akshepa labhya we have a notion that kriya cannot be there without karta there must be karta without karta how kriya could be there therefore you bring in karta therefore karta is not the starting point kriya is the starting point once the kriya is in place then karta came and if it is a transitive verb that kind of verb then karma also will come and other karma will come later this is how the structure of duality is there in place so you brought in duality just by making a statement in the wrong way how deepam deepah सर्व प्रकाशयति दट कैंड ऑफ एट जुगालिटी हेस्कम 
And a Kartrutvam is also there on the Deepa. And as I will say like this, Deepa has Thorati, not Prakashati, Deepa has Thorati. Sarvam Prakashati. Deepa has Thorati. It is shining, that's all. Why is Thorati? Because it is its Swarupa. Shining is its Swarupa. Thoradam is its Swarupa. It has Thorati. Now, when you say Deepa has Thorati, then everything else is shining. Now, immediately the entire situation is now altered. Whatever is appearing in the shine may be real, may not be real. So, I have already provided an opportunity for you to negate the entire appearance as Andriya. Because you dikta hai, nahi hai. Therefore, I have prepared the ground for and negating the word, jagat nirakaranam, jagat nirakartum shakyate. But if you say kriya, transitive verb, katta, then nirakaranam becomes all the more difficult. Then you have to do nirakaranam of the katta also in the process. All those issues should be there. Therefore, don't bring in the entire structure of karakas. Look at it in the simplest of the terms. Deepaha, the light, is it doing a job? No. Then what it is? It is. It is. What about shining? Its being is its shining. Being and shining are no different. When you say the light is, and then the light shines, it's only verbal difference. No actual, in actuality there is no difference. It is the verbal difference. So you use different words to make it look as though it is different. Therefore, when you say Deepaha Sphorati, the word Sphorati is a uh, it is the Meru Danda, it is the backbone of our Vedantic vision. That's why Shankara says, Yasyaiva Sthuranam, Dakshinamukti Stotra. Yasyaiva Sthuranam Sadatmakam. The Sthuranam is, is indeed the Swarupa of Sat. And uh, the Swarupa of the Sthuranam is the Sat. Sthuranam is the Chit. Sadatmakam Sthuranam. It is the Sthuranam. So the light is a shining. And then many things are appearing in that light. In that shining, many things come to surface. Or they, they appear, like on a movie screen. What appears is never real. It is an appearance only. So it is easy now to negate. The light which is and which shines, that alone is the truth. That is how a, a non-transitive verb, sporati, it takes you to the truth much easier than the transitive verb prakashayati. Therefore, the sporati, it is, it shines. And ananda is its swarupa, is its fragrance. And it is a sporati. It is not doing anything. It is just a sporati. As it is shining, so many things appear in, its, in the wake of its shining. And whatever appears and disappears, it is a time, time bound. There is a law of Vedanta, incontrovertible law. Whatever begins in time will end in time, and whatever begins and ends in time is unreal. And also, if you will, it is momentary, clinical. So, anyway, that is a big thesis. We will see it there, leave it at that. Therefore, the Satchit is Sphorati. And that is Sphoranam, it has a fragrance, the fragrance of Ananda. Then, if the Satchit is Nitya, timeless, and it is ever shining, and therefore Ananda must be ever with us. What happens is, Ananda is not with us ever because the Ananda is covered by Munovrutti. The Tikakara makes it very nicely, very nicely he explains it. So he says, Manushyadi uh, Stamba Pariyanteshu. So, Antakkarana Vrutti Vaishadhyatara Tamyena Avarana Abhibhava Tara Tamyad. So there is the Avarana, cover up. What is this avaranam antakkarana vrutti kamasita? It is like it is ever shining. You put a black paper on its top. Still it is shining. 
But the black paper covers up the shine and its fragrance is also covered up. Now, this black paper which you have put uh, to cover it up, it may be very thick when uh, you do not get even a glimpse of the shine or it may be less thick, you get an occasional glimpse. And sometimes you remove this a little side and again put it back, then more ananda comes. Therefore, in animals, this cover is very thick, tamoguna. In humans, it is less thick, rajoguna, and occasionally sattvaguna. Sattvaguna doesn't cover up, it reflects. Therefore, it is our rajoguna which is covering up the ever-shining satchidananda. And occasionally, the cover is moved aside only to come back. Therefore, we get what is called Anandasya Sikaraha. Sikaraha means droplets. We get droplets of Ananda. And then there is Taratanya. In a person's life, within one person's life, Taratanya means sometimes I am more happy, sometimes I am less happy. This more happy and less happy situation is created by the type of covering that is taking place. When uh, the mind is more agitated, it becomes uh, such a thick screen like thing and hence you seldom become happy. When uh, the people are very worldly and uh, they, they allow themselves to be mired in the affairs of the world, assuming that it is all real, there is something to be grabbed there. With that kind of a uh, funny notion, they surround themselves with a lot of uh, uh, web-like worldly things, uh, so their ananda is now very effectively covered, and so they accumulate lots of things, etc., but they seldom become happy. But in that uh, situation also, you, you cannot cover that ananda all the way, because it is ever shining brilliantly, Therefore, sometimes what happens is, due to some punya, that the cover is temporarily set aside and so the ananda shines, only to be covered back. This is how that explains the Taratama. When the Rajoguna is more, less ananda, when Rajoguna is less and the Sattvaguna shines a little more, then more ananda. Within the same person's life, this is how Taratamya is explained. And among many people, one is more sattvic, he will experience more ananda, whereas more rajasic and more tamasic people. Tamasic people means given to consumption of um, uh, abuse, substance abuse, they are given to substance abuse, they are called tamasic people. And also overeating is also a tamasic quality, and the sleeping more than required is also tamasic quality. This is essence of tam- tamoguna, so that also covers up ananda and rajoguna is Kama, Krotha, Nova, Moha, this is all Rajoguna, that covers up Ananda, and uh, so depending upon the composition of these Gunas, in the Antakkarana of the person, so Ananda is either revealed or covered up. That explains the different levels of joy that people get in their lives. This is how he puts it. So this is the formula. You never ever get happiness from anywhere else. Happiness is the fragrance of your own being. For if you want to be happy, there is only one way of getting it. That is, you have to see that this cover of that happiness is removed. And uh, so that is how all the living beings are gaining this happiness from the same source which is Atma, Sarvesham Jeevanam. Then, uh, in this context, uh, there is one more uh, very critical aspect of uh, Ananda, namely, you see, a person is alive and his body-mind is animated. So what is the source of that aliveness, that animatedness? What is the source of that? So, people are tend to think that the physical body which is nourished by food is the source of that aliveness. This is the Annamaya Buddhi. Annamaya. And uh, some other people think that that, that aliveness is, uh, has its origin in the movement of the physical body. So the limbs are active, the heart is pumping blood and the body is very healthy. So that is the source of aliveness. This is the pranamaya thinking. Then many people think that 
that the aliveness has its origin in the mind. It is the mind which makes things alive. That is how they think. Then some other people will think that it is the buddhi, the vijnanamaya, that makes uh, the body alive. And uh, then the egoity, anandamaya, bhoktrutvam, maya is bhoktrutvam, that egoity, that is the source of aliveness of this uh, body-mind. This is how many people think. You see, you are search for the source of life and the source of vijnana in this body-mind. There is life and there is vijnana, there is a, the power of knowing that is also there. So the source of it, what is the source? So you are search for the source. And also searching within the Adhyatma, without, instead of going to heaven and all that. Searching within the Adhyatma. Suppose you say, because my star is a good star, I am happy. That means you have put the source of your happiness in a distant object in the other. Whereas in this Pranamaya, Mahamaya, at least uh, there is one good point is, uh, that the search is confined to the Adhyatma. That itself is a great thing it is. The search is all the way Adhyatma. You never move a step away from yourself because what you call Adhibhuta, supposed to be different from Adhyatma, is Mithya. It is unreal. Therefore, everything is in Adhyatma. What you call Adhibhuta is also included in Adhyatma, if you know better. Therefore, you search inside, search within, look within. The search is correct, but uh, it should not be outside, it should be within. Therefore, even while saying Annamaya, Pranamaya, there is uh, the part is right. That's why it is not entirely negated. It is blessed. Because the person has come to Adhyatma and he is looking at Annamaya as the possible source of that aliveness. Okay, you are doing a, go, you are stepping in the right direction. Tapo Brahmati. Uh, go ahead and continue your tapas, he says. He doesn't say, it is all nonsense, stop it. He doesn't say that. You continue. So, he arrives at the bhoktrutva that could be the source of the aliveness in life. Then, <coughs> Shruti says, no, not that. Then what is it? What else is there? Because you have covered the entire individual, the entire person is covered now. Nothing is left. The person, including the body, mind, the emotions, the from the from everything is covered. Nothing is left. No. You have covered everything, but virtually, really speaking, you have not covered the real thing. The real thing is Anandaha. That is there. That is the source of aliveness in life. That is animating this body-mind. And what is that Ananda? You don't know, but it is there in your life. You see, there are moments when the mind becomes, uh, even temporarily, for a short while, becomes quiet, when uh, that ananda surfaces. And uh, as it were, it flows into the body-mind. And uh, that flow, however small it is, it, it is presented as sikara a droplet, however small it is, it is that flow of ananda that makes the body-mind alive. That is the source of life. That is the secret of life. And that ananda is none other than Ishvara. The God that you are worshipping is that ananda. That is the thesis. In this context, I will give an example. Suppose, uh, a person is crying bitterly because of the loss of the beloved or whatever. Somebody died and so the person is crying bitterly. When the person is crying bitterly, uh, people notice and they try to console, but are inconsolable. But still, uh, somebody uh, has a, uh, a good idea, he brings a nice cup of coffee, hot, uh, fragrant cup of coffee. and. Uh, pushes this cup of coffee into this person's hands and then uh, holds that hand and pushes the cup of coffee to the lips and then uh, pushes, okay, take it, take it and then she takes a little. Then uh, that uh, coffee a little is taken, that becomes an interruption 
in the flow of uh, sadness, that movement of mind in the form of uh, unhappiness. So this coffee, it gives a sensation and the flow of thoughts is uh, temporarily interrupted and suddenly the Atma, she is the Ananda Swarupa, he or she, Ananda Swarupa is Ananda. Only thing is it is very badly covered up by the, uh, the sorrow. Uh, so the sorrow, the, 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 the intensity of the sorrow, uh, it covers up the Swarupa so badly that any idea of Ananda in the person itself is unimaginable. So, but uh, this coffee, that sensation, uh, uh, sense of touch or sense of taste, for a very short while, it puts a break in that flow of unhappiness, of that sorrow, and suddenly the inner Ananda, it is reflected. And that gives the energy to cry. Without that energy coming out, the lady, the person, male or female, will not be able to even to cry. Because even to cry you need that aliveness. Even to feel sorrowful, and even to spend a, a period of unhappiness, people need energy. And that energy, that aliveness, it comes from that ananda. So, suppose you imagine, in a person's life, there is no occasion, even for a uh, short uh, time, that inner ananda is not revealed, suppose. The person won't live anymore, it will, the person will die. It is that inner ananda which is keeping this body-mind alive. That is the idea of sarvesham jivanam. That ananda is the jivanam. Not prana. Prana is a product of the ananda. That's why in Kathopanishad there is a vakya. Uh, so, esaha pranena na jivati na apane na jivati. He is not, uh, not living because of inhalation or exhalation. So, there is a vamana sitting here because of whom he is living. Like that there is a vakya. So, napanena uh, na pranena jivati, something is there. Eta dvaita, that ananda is the Brahman. Like that there is a vakya in the Therefore, that is such an ananda, that ananda aspect is the thing there. That fragrance of such it is the thing that makes you alive and that makes you an animated body mind that is so that, that is the Ishvara. And so many prostrations into that Ishvara. Here the Tika, uh, I got that Vakya here. Na pranena, na panena matyo jivati kaschana. Any human being, he is alive, animated, but not because of prana and apana. Then how? Itarena tu jivante. There is the other. Yasmin neta upashitam. That other is here. And this prana and apana are, uh, are abiding in it. They have their ground in it. They, are, they have their ground in it. That is the upashitam. The example given huh? that the Rathanabhi the hub of a wheel of the chariot. And uh, these spokes are there. These spokes, uh, they seem to be very firmly holding the wheel. They are not the spokes which are holding the wheel. In fact, they seem to be holding the wheel, but the spokes themselves are held by the hub. Similarly, the body is uh, held alive, animated by the prana and the pana. It looks like that, but it is not the prana and the pana which are the real ones. It is the hub-like Atma, Ananda, which keeps the prana and apana in place. Thereby, through them, the body is held alive. Therefore, that Ratha, Ratha ne ne mo, ava iva arpitaha, like that Mundaka example is there. Therefore, that is the Ananda, which is the source of life in a human being. Therefore, our source of life, if you reach, you have already reached Brahmananda. That is where you have to seek and that is where you have to search. Look within, search within. Find the secret of life. Find the source of life. This is what Bhagavan Maharshi used to say. The I am, the sense of I am. Find its source. Where from uh, does it originate? Find it. Uh, so, how to find it? Try. 
There is no hope. Try. Trying is the all important thing. You try. You will not fail. You will reach it. That is where you will discover your Swarupa as the Ananda. That is the Ananda. That is the source of life. That is the secret of life. We have to discover it before the body falls. That is the, uh, that is the Sadhana. Anyway, we will be saying many more things about this Ananda and all that eventually. One more verse of prayer. Divi Bhumau Tatha Kashe Vahiram Tascha Me Vibhu Yo Vibhatya Vabhasatma Tasmai Sarvatmane Namaha Divi Bhumau Tatha Kashe this is the three lokas. Generally we have three lokas, three loka more. The same thing can be uh, further split into fourteen lokas and all that, but essentially three lokas. Bhuhu, Bhuvaha, Suvaha. Suvaha is the Divi. Bhuvaha, Bhumau is the Bhuvi. In between, Antaraksha loka are called Bhuvaha, Bhuvar loka. That is the Akasha, these three lokas. In all the three lokas. Then, uh, Bahihi Antaha. Bahihi outside, Antaha inside. There must be a reference point, you know, me. I am the reference point. You see, the human being is the reference point. You see, I tell you how. God, uh, Ishvara, is like a circle with infinite radius. Why infinite radius? Because the circle called Ishvara includes the entire universe in itself. That's why infinite radius. Even the space is included in Ishvara. Ishvara pervades the space, includes the space, transcends the space, and yet pervades and includes the space. Space includes everything else. So, Ishvara, uh, he pervades the, the the entire Brahmana, so Ishwara is like the infinite circle, circle of infinite radius. You see, a circle of a finite radius will have one center, it will have a fixed center, that is the center. Whereas a circle of infinite radius has a center everywhere, that is the secret. Therefore, this God. The all pervasive God, Sarva, Sarvam Yapaka, Sarvatmane Namaha, He is all pervasive. He pervades and interpenetrates the entire Brahmanda. Now He has a center. Where? Everywhere. In every human heart He is a center. He has a center. That's why this is the beauty. You are the center of Ishvara. I am the center of Ishvara. Every one of us is the center of that great sphere. Not circle. Circle is full of some negative sphere. That sphere of infinite radius. That is Ishvara. And every one of us is equally the center of that uh, infinite radius. Uh, so, you see, uh, what happens is, uh, if you go to Kashi, they say Kashi is the center of the Brahmanda. And if you go to Rameshwaram, they say Rameshwaram is the center of the Brahmana. Not only Kashi and Rameshwaram. We have a small village in our uh, East Godavari district called Vyagreshwaram. Three miles from our uh, place. And when we go to Vyagreshwaram, they used to say this is the center of the universe. You, and then, uh, very interesting, I was uh, stunned when I was in Jerusalem for some reason. I don't know how I ended up in Jerusalem, but I was there for a few days, not recently, long back. And then uh, I was going through that uh, uh, Holy Sepulchre and all that, I was looking at a few places. And one of those uh, persons told me, Swamiji, you know, this is the center of the earth. That is what you say. <laughs> so now one more center of the earth. <laughs> Chidambaram is also the center of the earth. <coughs> the fact is that every one of them are telling the truth. That is the truth. Because we are talking of a sphere of infinite radius. 
And I am, you are the center of that sphere. I am the center of that sphere. That's why you may, may, with reference to me, Bhūloka, Bhūvarloka, Suvarloka. With reference to me, Antaha, Bhahiti. And I am, Yaha, Vibhati. Ishvara is a shining. In all the three lokas, with reference to me. And with reference to me, inner and outer, everywhere, Ishvara is a shining. Because why, how he is shining? Is he doing a job? No, he is not doing a job. The lamp is shining. Is it doing something? No, it is not doing. You see, in life, you are confused between being and doing. Fundamental uh, uh, delusion. There is a confusion in our life between being and doing. Doing includes thinking also. You are not thinking. You are not thinking. You are not the product of thinking. The thinking, it creates an entity. That entity you are not. When you take yourself to be that entity created by thinking, then you are confusing between being and thinking. Because being is never in doubt. I am. See, I am is never in doubt. You see, I tell you, you experience I am in the waking state. You experience, you do not experience I am in sleep. But, I, I challenge you, do you ever experience I am not? Even in sleep, do you experience I am not? That is that how you experience in sleep? It is a contradiction. You cannot have that experience. I am not. That experience is not possible. This is where Shunyavadis and Advaitins differ. Na nahamasmeti kaschit pratiyat. Shankara in Ramusu Prabhashya. I think it is in Adhyasa Vashya. Na nahamasmeti kaschit pratiyat. Ahamasmi is optional. There is sometimes it is and sometimes it is not. But nahamasmi is never ever there. That experience is never there. That's why you can only present the truth in a negation. Never in a positive means. Okay, you, know, you give something to people. Uh, so in a positive way you say. But uh, if you have to say in a right way, you can only say, Na nahamasmeti kaschit pratiyat. Kaschit, whosoever it may be, whosoever. Aham na asmi, I am not. It is na pratiyat. That kind of an experience nobody ever has. Therefore, that, uh, that I am is ever shining. Uh, that uh, uh, Atma is, uh, the, la- the light is ever shining. Avabhasa Atma. Suppose you say, uh, there was an experience when I am not. I experienced my own absence. That means the, the deep bujhagaya, the light is put off. The light of shining is put off. Uh, so when the light of shining is put off, uh, then only you can experience I am not. But suppose you experience I am not, the light of shining is still shining only. So it is a contradiction. You cannot have such experience, which only, which only means that, that uh, awareness is ever, ever shining. Why it is ever shining? Is it not tired of shining? No. It is not tired of shining because shining is not a kriya, it is not an action. If it is action, it gets tired of. Mind gets tired of the thinking. That's how you want to sleep. Because it is tired of thinking. Not because you are done with the world. But you will start doing it next time for me. But because the mind is tired of thinking. Whereas the Atma is never tired of shining. Like sun. Not never tired of shining. Like that lamp. It is never tired of shining. You know why? Because it is not a Kriya. It is a Swarupa. Avabhasa Atma. Atma is a Swarupa. Avabhasa is its Swarupa. And uh, that Swarupa is ever shining. And therefore, the three lokas are shining. The inner Adhyatma is shining. The outer Adhibhuta is shining. That Avabhasa, that uh, ever shining, ever full being, is the Ishvara. And uh, he is shining uh, as everything. And therefore, my pronouns to that Avabhasa Atmane, Sarvatmane, Namaha. So that concludes the prayer. Me mama, mama, ah, vibhuhu sarvam yapakaha, vibhuhu sarvam yapakaha.
the vibhu word i have uh, not explained vividham bhavati iti vibhu means sarvam vyaptoti ityartha you see i tell you the movie example is the best example you have uh, an entire world on the movie screen entire world you have the world of uh, pleasures it is there the economy world it is there and then uh, the family emotions sentiments all of that is there then shungara rasa karma rasa all rasa are there and then dharma adharma they are there sukha dukha they are there then gods and goddesses and all really it is there everything is there on the movie screen nothing is left to write tell you everything is there now where from all these things have come in fact they did not come they are not going that one light is shining as all of these okay so you can explain it in two ways that one light has become all this that is the statement from the sat point of view we know that one light is shining as all these avabhasa sarvatmana avabhasate that is the statement made from the chit aspect a point of view of the vastu so when you when you highlight this sat aspect you say bhavati vividham bhavati when you highlight the chit aspect you say vividham bhasate vividha rupena bhasate so if the light becomes everything the light shines as everything based on that you don't end up believing that everything is real no everything is only an appearance it's not real it is that's why i always uh, maintain that you should not make the statement to jagat asti you should not make that statement because even when making the statement you have created a a shackle for yourself which you have to break it later you see you create a, a wall around you and now you have to demolish that wall nobody else will demolish god won't demolish it for you you have to demolish therefore before constructing the wall you take care so don't say jagat asti because while saying jagat asti you are already believing it is there and now you have to neutralize that belief until then you have to suffer from that belief so don't say jagat asti the safe way is the jagat drishyate the jagat appears you contemplate like that especially in moments of distress when you are disturbed you are facing an issue in life then when you look with them you say jagat drishyate this is an appearance this is a swapna i am swapna there ka swapna this is all a swapna and then i you say it one time inside and then open your eyes then already the burden is half now something has to be done the samsara is not kind to anybody something has to be done so figure it out what can be done and you do that it's a love and compassion whatever you have to do you do it and then leave it in the hands of ishwara sarnagati and then close the eyes and say one more time i am swapna this is a swapna my doing is also swapna and then you are doing okay probably you can survive this samsara otherwise this samsara will devour the thing it is very toxic and very painful therefore don't say jagat asti say jagat drishyate the burden of samsara is already half reduced so because if you say the tactics they said the jagat asti when you say jagat asti wo kahan se aaya it has to where from did it come so it came from paramanus this is tactics and so the entire life they were thinking about paramanus only <laughs> then the sankhya they said jagat asti and they said it came from prathana hmm. and so whole of their life they are great rishis great thinkers but the whole of their life they spent in thinking about prathana only it came from shunya so they are thinking from about shunya 
सो जस्ट रूप से जगत अस्ति से जगत दृश्य थे जन्मा दृश्य थे वंश यू से नॉट बिकम सीजी टू गेट इट बिकॉज अपियरेंसेस आर फॉल्स दैट इज इन आवर एक्सपीरियंस रज्जू सत्ता I read an English saying that even this will pass. Even this will pass, yeah. It came from Hindi only, yeah. Hindi and Sanskrit. So there is a Mahatma in Rishikesh. So you enter in his kuti. There uh, uh, altar is there, some Ishwaras photograph and some puja this and that, and then a statement there. Ye bhi tikavu nahi, <laughs> something like that. Even this will pass. So once you realize that this is unreal, then you can go ahead and do your duty and all that. Therefore, once you say drishyate, then uh, the, now this mimamsa will be not about the karana and the karya, uh, in the transformational sense or vikara or whatever. That it is not that kind of a mimamsa. Now the mimamsa is a katham drishyate, a kim drishyate. What is real and what is unreal? So the entire mimamsa takes a, a marvelous course, uh, which will put you into the lap of the truth. Therefore, avabhasa mani namaha. So avabhasa, there is a light, and because of that light, all this blessed thing is appearing. And that light, uh, so the, I am doing my pranam to that light. Suppose you realize that you are that light. That you are the center of that light, and you are that light. First, so yeah. Then you have done pranama to yourself. Like that. Although we analyze aham brahmasmi. Yeah, that light is myself. That light is Brahma, and that I am. So aham brahmasmi. हाँ या दिव्य भूमो आकाशे वही ही अंत सो एज लॉन्ग एज इनफैक्ट फर्स्ट यू शुड नो दट अधिभूता इज इंक्लूडेड इन अध्यात्म नो अधिदैवा सो एज लॉन्ग एज दट सेंस ऑफ इंडिविजुअल एक्जिस्टेंस सेपरेट एक्जिस्टेंस इज देर देन यू प्रेस द ग्लोरी ऑफ दट अधिदैवा यू सरेंडर टू अधिदैवा यूचुअली The sense of separation disappears, and so Adi Deva and Adhyatma they merge, and uh, the reality emerges. That reality you don't give any name to it; reality it is. From the Adhyatma point of view, it is called Atma. From the Adi Deva point of view, it is called Brahman, including the Jagat. Therefore, in in reality, it is nameless reality. It is nameless because it is attributeless. To give a name, you need an attribute. Once the attribute is not there, there is no name for it. Very nice. We will go to the next verse. Okay. So there, Bharadwaja Uvacha. That that is the verse, right? So Bharadwaja Uvacha, Jivan Mukta. डायलॉग बिटवीन भरद्वाज एंड वाल्मीक महर्षि आफ्टर नाउ द प्रेयर इज कंक्लूडेड नाउ वे आर कमिंग टू द सब्जेक्ट मैटर द डायलॉग इज स्टार्टेड So Bharadwaja happens to be the disciple of Valmiki Maharshi, as it is presented in Shiva Brahmayana also. So, in fact, in Shiva Brahmayana, this famous verse is there: Bharadwaja Nishamaya, San Manushya Mano Yatha. Like the two padas, I remember two more padas are there: Akar Dhamma Medam Tertham, Bharadwaja Nishamaya. सन मनुष्य मधु मनु यथा देखो यू सी दिस तीर्था तीर्था मीन्स ए प्लेस टू टेक बात घाट नॉट मेड ऑफ सीमेंट एंड ऑल दैट इज मॉडर्न घाट सो इन टाइम ऑफ वाल्मीकि सम प्लेस वेर इट इज द स्लोप इज वेरी जेंटल एंड यू कैन नाइसली एंटर एंड इट इज सैंडी सर्फेस 
the, the underneath the, uh, it is standing. Therefore, you can nicely enter inside up to this uh, level and take a bath and come out. That, that kind of comfort you don't find everywhere along the course of the river. In some places you cannot enter the river. In some places you can easily go there. That is called Tirtha, where you can easily enter and take bath. That is called Tirtha. So this Tirtha, he already stepped inside two, three steps and then he felt the sand, nice sand underneath, Akardam. Therefore this is not a slimy. Uh, so that Kardama, what is Kardama? Buroda. What is it? It is called? Mud. mud. It is not muddy. And uh, so very uh, the organic matter, all that, uh, it is uh, very muddy and the slimy kind of muddy kind of thing where the, uh, the feet will uh, get uh, and you don't feel comfortable with it. It is not like that. It is very nice, Akardam. And then he looks at the water, takes a little water, oh my goodness, the water is very clean. It is a transparent and a very pure, clean, a sun manushya manoyatha, like a, the mind of a good guy. That is what he says. The mind of a good person. This is called prasa, yeah, prasannam. He uses the word Bharadvaja Nishamaya, uh, prasanna salilam, something like that. That is the prasada. Prasada means the mind is very quiet. That is the prasada. So, uh, like water, the word prasanna or prasada is used in the context of mind and water alone, nowhere else it is used. It is water which is prasanna and it has the quality of prasada and it is the mind which has got the quality of prasada. Then what about the prasadam? That is symbolic, symbolic of these two, symbolic of the pure mind. After worshipping Lord, your mind becomes very calm and quiet and pure, that is the prasanna. Anyway, so prasanna salilam, you look at this uh, place, uh, so I will take bath here. And Bharadvaja is standing on the bank with uh, dry clothing and all that. So then Valmiki enters the river and he takes bath. So this way it is presented in Srimad Ramayana. So Bharadvaja and Valmiki, they are the Guru and Bharadvaja is the student. So he is asking him, Harshe, Vaghavam Adita Kartva. This is Sri Rama, he is a jnani. He is a jnani. Uh, so, uh, a jnani need not be a sannyasi, he can be a grahastha also. Uh, in fact, there is a beautiful verse uh, Krishno Bhogi Sukas Kyagi Nurupau Janakara Adhavau. Vasishthadhyaha, Grahasthaha, Vasishthadhyaha, etc. So a jnani need not belong to a particular ashram. The enlightened Mahatma, he doesn't belong to a varna, or a varga, or a jati, or a desha, or a kala. doesn't belong to any of these things. The enlightened Mahatma are there in all varnas. In all jatis, in the west, in the east, in the middle, everywhere they are there. At all times they are there. Now also they are there. <laughs> and then uh, uh, in all places they are there. In all ages they are there. In all ashramas they are there. Brahmachari, Jnana Dev, Vijay Brahmachari. Nama Dev, Ekanath, Dilar Grahasthas. Panaprastha, Jnani, Sarkar, Vasishtha, etc. Sanyasi Shukaha, Shukha Maharshi is a jnani, Purvanavana Maharshi. He is a brahmachari, really not a sanyasi, really speaking. And then um, there are great sanyasi, Mahatmas, Ramatirtha, etc. Swami Ramatirtha. Therefore, uh, Nurupau Janaka Raghavau, Sri Rama is the king, but he uh, still is a jnani. Janaka is a king, but jnani. Karmana Yogi Samsiddhima Sthita Janaka Dayaha. There are a few other kings, Ashwapati. Kekaya, these are all the kings who are jnanis. And Krishna ha bhogi, he seems to be a bhogi, he is not a bhogi. Sri Krishna is not a bhogi, you look at Gita, what he says. So, uh, he says, Yehi sansparsha ja bhogaha dukha yonaya evate adhyanta vanta kaunteya na teshu ramate budhaha. Budhaha viveki teshu bhogeshu na ramate. The person of discrimination will not revel in all these sense pleasures. 
Now you tell me Krishna could he be a bhogi talking like this? He is not a bhogi. This is our perception. So he appears to be a bhogi, but still, in spite of appearance of a bhogi, he is a jnani. In spite of being a king, Rama is a jnani. So Raghavam Adita Kripa, that is what he says. So he, because Valmiki means for him Rama is the embodiment of all virtues. And therefore, keeping Rama as an example, kindly explain to me the conduct of a Jeevan Mukta. That is the question. Yoga Vasistha begins with a Jeevan Mukta. An enlightened Mahadi begins like that. He doesn't begin with Viveka uh, Vaira. Uh, he doesn't begin like that. It doesn't begin at a lower level. It directly begins with the Jeevan Mukta Sthiti. How you, you explain how a Jeevan Mukta conducts himself. Then uh, Valmiki is going to explain in two or three verses. This is the basis around which the entire text is created. Jivan Mukta Avastha. By living now and here, you have to be liberated from the thraldom of samsara. And uh, having been liberated, you continue to live as an enlightened soul. How to go about it? That is the, uh, that is the starting point. And that is the subject matter around which this great poem is uh, uh, spun. It is uh, that is the subject matter. Shri Valmiki Ruvacha, Brahmasya Jagatasya Asya, Jatasya Kasha Varnavat, Apunas Maranam Manye, Sadhu Vismaranam Varam. You see, the type of reply he gives, it directly uh, it uh, falls into the category of uh, Achyuttama Adhikari. The Adhikari Veda is there. Manda Madhyama Uttama. In Vairagya also, Manda Madhyama Uttama are there. So, a lower level, mediocre level, and a superior level. Uh, even in Mandukya, Shankara talks of these levels in the Bhashya. Because Gaudapada, mentions these levels in, in uh, two, three karik, karikas. It is obvious, you know, suppose uh, you uh, join uh, a physical exercise course, a course in which the physic is built, that kind of a course, like martial arts, uh, like that a course you join. Bodybuilding. Huh? Bodybuilding. A bodybuilding course or martial arts you join. There are suppose 40 students who are taking that course. And so all of them are doing exercises and all that. Do you find all of them equally physically sturdy and uh, energetic? No. Some of them will be a very lower level. With the enthusiasm they have, but physical strength they don't have. So they have drifted into the course for some reason. Uh, eventually they may uh, come out of it also. Some of them at least will drop out, will be there from that group only. Then there are mediocres and then there are senior, uh, very well, uh, already they have, they have got some expertise in the martial arts, already. Now they strive even a lot more and uh, they come out with the flying colors, that kind of uttama. And they won all the three are there. Black belt. Black belt, of course. Vedanta is also like that. So, if you talk of uh, some serious vairagya, you will have many dropouts, they just drop out. Because uh, Vairagya is not a very enjoyable thing, you know. Uh, and uh, you see, uh, this I was saying uh, since ages, any discourse uh, on Vairagya is difficult for the speaker as well as for the shrotas. <laughs> and uh, therefore what we have to do, you read the verse and then uh, uh, scrap it around and do some magic around it. <laughs> And I never coming to the point. <laughs> so you have to do that. Whereas uh, this uh, text is something unique. It, uh, uh, they say, hitting the bull's eye. Do they say like that? So something like that. He begins to say, Valmiki Ruvacha. So Valmiki is saying, Dhamasya Jagatasya Asya. Dhamma. 
टीका का रस इज भ्रमा अध्यास दट इज वॉट इज भ्रमा इज भ्रमा इज अध्यास इन भ्रमा भ्रमा मीन्स मिस्टेक इन इंग्लिश इस वर्ब मिस्टेक इट इज फॉलोड बाई फू मिस्टेक फार सो बिफोर दि फर एंड आफ्टर दि फर देर विल बी टू ऑब्जेक्ट and one of them is the real and the other is the superimposed that's why it is the adhyasa so mistake the rope for the snake so before fall you have the adhisthana and after fall you have the adhyaropa what what is it brahma and mithya are the same ah uh, mithya is the status brahma is the dynamics of uh, the delusion interconnected what you take as real is not real that is mithya so the serpent is mithya but brahma is the mistaking of the serpent uh, of the rope for the serpent that is the brahma in brahma there is adhyasa adhi asa adhi upar anit asa you you put it so this is the brahma what is the brahma here so in brahma you see only one thing you don't see two things you see only one thing and that one thing is unreal okay if it is unreal then there is real but you won't see real because you take the unreal to be the real once you take the unreal to be real your ability to see the real is a badly compromised you will be able to see the real only after this notion of a The unreal being taking the unreal as real is is negated. That that should be negated first. So then only there is a chance of arriving at the truth. In fact, I will go one step forward and say it is enough to negate the Brahma. It is enough. You need not do anything more because the truth will reveal itself. It is the Brahma that covers up the truth, and so take care of the Brahma. The truth will take care of itself. So Brahmasya Jagatasya Sya Jatasya. This is Brahma. This is the illusion. This adhyasa happened in our lives. Jatasya. Now he is explaining a Jivan Mukta sthiti, beginning with the Brahma. And this Jivan Mukta is one who has set aside this Brahma very firmly. That is how he is going to discuss. Therefore, even a Jivan Mukta can be described in negative terms only. You describe the Brahma, the delusion in which people live, and then say, "Even Mukta is one who is free from this delusion." Like that, you have to say there is no other way of saying it. Asya Jagatasya Brahmasya Jatasya. Jatasya means that which happened. It happened already in our lives. What is the uh, what happened? The delusion called Jagat. The name of the delusion is Jagat. Jagatasya means Jagatas Sambandhi. Don't mistake it with Jagrat. It is not Jagrat. Jagata. So Jagatas Sambandhi. Jagatasya. Jagatas Sambandhi. Na ha. Adhyasa Lakshana Sya Brahmasya. So this Brahma happened. How did it happen? You see, how did it happen? Why did it happen? This is called Ajnana Mimamsa or Brahma Mimamsa. You want to find out the antecedents of the delusion. You will not be successful in that because to find out the antecedents of the delusion, you operate with the mind structure which is already deluded. So uh, antecedents means what Karana Karya Bhava is there. So Brahma is the Karya and you want the Karana. So Karana Purva Varti. Karya means the uttara varti. It comes later. Already you have established the flow of time. Flow of time itself is the basis for Brahma. How are you going to operate now? Therefore, you cannot find the antecedents of Brahma or Ajnana. Ajnana is the cause of the. You can say like that. So then, what is the cause of the Ajnana? There is no cause there. Therefore, uh, what we have to do is. Uh, A few questions are there. They cannot be answered. You, you cannot give an answer to those questions. You can only know that the question is wrong. There are certain questions which are wrong questions, and uh, you put a wrong question on my head and expect me to answer it. No, it cannot be answered. Then uh, there is a way of answering it. What? 
Sir, your question is wrong. That is the answer. <laughs> like Big Bang is there. When did Big Bang happen? It's a wrong question. Where did Big Bang happen? It's a wrong question. How did Big Bang happen? It's a wrong question. Because only after Big Bang you have the time in which the karana and the karya are separated, then only the word how will have a meaning. Till then how has no meaning. And uh, what is the source of this ajnana? It's a wrong question. It just happened at Tatsa. In fact, it did not happen, if you know better. Sarpa happened. We are saying happened. But eventually we will say nothing happened. It is a very tricky thing. That's why we use the word maya. That explains everything. The inexplicable is explained by maya. Therefore, asya bhramasya jatasya, it happened, akasya varnavata. The space is there. Space means uh, if you look like that, uh, you get a notion that there is a dome there. Blue colored dome is there. There is a dome. First there must be a dome. Then only there can be color to that. Without a dome, how can you have color? So there must be a wall. Then only you can put some exotic color to it. Uh, so that is the dome. Tala. Tala. Akasha looks like a tala. is a dome. A surface. And then uh, on that surface there is a color. So, Talamalinadi, Akashe Talamalinadi, Adhyasyanti Balaha, Shankara in Adhyasvasya. <coughs> Balaha means Avivekinaha, not children. So, Avivekinaha is just uh, Adhyasyanti. So, this Akasha Varnavata, the color of this space, it happened. How it happened? It is the trick that the mind and senses together play upon you. As long as you look at the Akasha with these eyes and with the mind behind them, you will end up seeing blue color only. Because this, the blue color is not there. Till now nobody established, could establish where is this blue color. It is a big maya. Where is this blue color? This is yellow or the orange. Where is this orange color? Where is it? So nobody could establish it. So it is all a trick played by the light dispersed or uh, the light uh, reflected by this uh, cloth and the eyesight and the mind, all of them conspire together to give you a notion of orange. And you take this notion of orange as the gospel truth. It is satyam. It is not satyam. It is relative to the eyesight and the mind. And whatever is relative can never be absolute and hence can never be the reality. So satyaksham can never be satyam. Because when one is there, the other is there. You remove the one, the other is also gone. Therefore, the akasha varna is not there. The best way to understand it is to look around the space around you. You look at this space. Just to contemplate upon it. Can you have any color for this space? You cannot have. Then the same space is there also. Then how is, how the, the, how is it that you end up seeing this color? That, that is the Brahma. Same way, in the Jagat is seen, same way. This is the big, big issue. Akasha Varna we understand very well, no, no, no issue. But uh, the Jagat, what is the Jagat? First you have to understand what is the Jagat. And then uh, once you understand that your version of Jagat correctly, then it becomes quite easy to realize that this version of Jagat, which I am holding on to, very close to my heart, is not clear. So we will continue.